on the bench this morning is a Pioneer Rando 2000. It's never been opened, never been worked on, and this belongs to my brother. He's put it away 10, 15 years ago because he was having issues with it. The potentiometers on here are filthy. Uh, was also stored in the basement. We can actually smell it a little bit. I told him I'd take a look at it. I have no idea what this sounds like. I've never plugged it in, but I have plugged it into my dim bulb. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to power this on, see if there's anything I could do with this. And here we go. Powered on. Well, you know. So it's only drawing about two volts, which tells me that there's nothing really major issues with this receiver. Uh, the majority of these receivers that comes on my bench is really not much to repair. It it only takes you know a good can of contact cleaner, so you can you know spray and clean all these pots. Um, other than that, if you have a receiver like this at home and thinking, oh my God, it's going to cost me an arm and a leg to repair, usually it's not the case. Usually, we've put it away because it was not, you know, sounding right. But uh, these are 40 years old, don't forget, and all they do need is a little bit of cleanup, and it should be okay. But this thing, or this issue, my brother stored this for 10, 15 years, thinking there was something major wrong with this. But I know, you know, according to this, everything is running smoothly. I'm turning this on, and I'm drawing about 2 volts. Everything is running smoothly under here. Okay, so let's continue on and take a look at this. But I do hear a hum. I'm sure this is, uh, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's really, really dirty. And you can tell by the smell of it, I can really smell that humidity. bought this brand new and he's also got the turntable that goes with it. There's the turntable. Bought these as a match. And these this turntable is Rando 2000. So this was a match. They were brothers and sisters in the showroom back in 1976 and he says the turntable is not working properly either. Yeah, it's dirty at its best. I can actually tell by the knobs. You can take a look at the knobs. I'm going to zoom you guys in on this, but uh, this thing needs a major cleanup. Look at these. But I'm looking at this front plate. There's not one scratch in here. So we clean this up and get this to look like showroom condition. I'm hoping anyway. This thing has never been open, but it's about to change. We're gonna do it right now. Okay, folks. We're opening this up for the very first time. Hope you guys are ready. There we go. Okay. It's got the uh, the power pack. AGA. It's really not the best, but I mean, it does work. Um, this is pushing 30 watts per channel. So I'll take this plate out. There's a lot of dust on here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this outside because I am really allergic to dust and it's, it would choke me to death. 
first thing I'm going to check is the fuse, see if they're all, I don't see any issues with the fuse. It's well protected, there's a lot of fuse on this. There's five, six fuses all together. Plug this in and I'm going to check some voltage. Two, three, so this one is 20. This one should be 20. This one is zero. This one should be zero. The second one, zero, four. Third, I mean, there's the fourth, and here's the fourth. Yeah, everything is equal. So, I know these, these Darlington power packs are working correctly. It's excellent news. The, what, the main issue with this whole receiver will be cleaning these out. I am going to check some capacitors. So let's unplug this. Make sure this is off. Let's see if I have... There's three volts there. But it's going down. So it's draining. So I should be okay. Start poking in a couple of minutes. Okay, so we'll, uh, we're going to check some capacitors on this. Don't expect uh, a lot of these capacitors are going to be bad. I think I don't suspect that at all. Pretty hard to see, eh? Check this out. This one and this one. These two right there. So here's a cap. And here's the other cap. Uh, this one is good. I'd like to test this blue one here. This blue one right here. good. This little blue one could be a bad one. It, it, it is. This one is open. Yeah, this is open. This is a 0.33 at 25 volts. And here's, here's what a good cap would look like. The needle would go all the way up to zero. I'm measuring this cap here. It's got 30 ohms of resistance. This cap is open. So regardless if it was going to make a difference or not, it needs to be changed, right? So we're going to get another one. So 0.33 at 25 volts. There's 334 nanofarad. Now, okay, all the caps, the one that needed to be changed, I've changed. Okay, so I am a major cleanup on these, uh, especially the volume and the balance truly an issue with this. this is my next step is I'm going to take this front plate off take all these off some of them are easy to come out some of them are not I use this little pad here This is 
a little a little push and that comes right out. Okay, like these ones I can't get it out of there. Oh, I got this one. So just making sure that I don't hit and, and all I need is to start it up. So these are going in the wash. I'm going to take this plate off. There we go. Okay, we got two little screws. sprayed really good. So now, there we have it. Just beautiful. Okay, I've changed the capacitors that needed to be changed on this. I've dusted it off as well. In all these pods that needed to be cleaned, every single one of them actually, but I found an issue and I'm going to turn this on and I'll show you what I've got. I'm not sure if you guys can hear this, but I have a buzzing sound. But I hear the buzzing sound. It's more so uh, when I put the bass on. Okay. issue right here when I touch this and if I press it the humming stops see there's no more humming I let it go the humming returns okay you guys should be able to see this the humming on the scope So it's happening on both sides. It's all on the left and the right channel. I don't know if you guys can see this. The noise is there. If I press on it, the noise stops. If I release it, the noise comes back. You can see it on the scope. So I have an issue right here, and I'm gonna investigate that.
Okay, so I'm going to flip this like this. There, the noise stops on this one. So this is a capacitor and I believe it's a soldering issue. So there's the soldering. Whenever I touch this, now there's no more noise. Now there is noise. Okay, this is the one here, and you can't, you can hardly see it. It's gone. I turned it on. You can actually see on a scope. There's no more humming. Okay, so I'll shut this off for now. And we're going to continue on to check this thing over. Okay. I'm going to give you a thousand hertz. Hot to use the tape output because I don't have any auxiliary on this Pioneer which is kind of too bad but anyways it was built like this so that's what it is and I've got it through my scope at 5 volts per division and power this on and we'll crank the volume and I'll mute this because I'm not going to listen to that And it's given me 10.8. It's almost at 11 uh, RMS per channel. They're both equal. You... Okay, I'll zoom you guys in. You'll have to excuse all my wires, but that's how it's it's set up. So, and I'm just showing you the the balance. How nice and clean that is. Did a really good job in cleaning those. At five volts per division on the left and the right channel. And I've got it under an 8 ohm load. They're almost equal. No one of them is at 9.8 and the other one's at 10. Now, if you add this up under an 8 ohm load, if you add this up, let's say 10 times 10 would be 100. And if you divide that by an 8 ohm load, that would only give me uh, half of what this is supposed to be. This receiver, they're telling me that it's, I should have 30 watts per channel with this. And right now, I'm only calculating this at around 15 watts per channel. So I'm kind of short 15 watts per channel. And I'm wondering why, when, since I don't have a schematic with this, I really am not sure how they uh, calculated 30 watts per channel unless it was under a 4 ohm load that would give me around 30 31 watts per channel if they added 4 ohm instead of 8 ohm if any of you would have any comments on this you're definitely free to let me know why am i only getting about 15 watts per channel it's clean it's very clean but this is supposed to be giving me 30 watts per channel okay so oh, anyway, something to discuss, and I'm going to move on to, I'm going to check if I have any DC voltage on my speaker terminal, <clears throat> and that'll be it for this receiver. So, the 
left channel has given me 29, 30 millivolts. And the right channel is giving me channel is a lot better about 2 millivolts the left channel is giving me around 30 millivolts <clears throat> and the thing is is there's no adjustments on this this is probably or it could be it could be a capacitor issue but I've checked them all and they're all you know they're all good so I'm just gonna leave it at that for me it's acceptable and it could be even the power packs. Uh, I'm frigging around with that. I'm not going to do that. To me, this is operational, and I'm good with that. All the lights are all working, too. The analog meter is working for the FM. Uh, it looks pretty damn good. Yeah. Show you the inside of this. Look how empty this is, eh? The new technology was coming in and not a very big transformer for 30 watts per channel. So I'm kind of hiffy on this. But I've changed quite a few capacitors. And uh, I did clean the front plate. Look at this front plate. It looks beautiful. Nice and clean. I think my brother's going to be happy with this. Now the Pioneer Rondo 2000 has been completely serviced. More, more cleaning than anything else. Uh, clean all these pots and uh, everything seems to be working great on this. Uh, the issue with this was uh, dirty pots. They were unbelievably dirty. Uh, I found a, a cold solder that was giving me a hum and we repair that if you're going to see that on the video. I did check the DC voltage which is, is acceptable. Uh, one channel, I think it's the left channel with 40 millivolts and uh, the right channel is perfect at I think it's 10 millivolts. So anyways everything is working fine with this and uh, if you enjoy the video Thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it.